Feldori South will be starting momentarily. There, I'll even mute myself on the uh, thing there, on my own Twitch. We are going to be starting as uh, soon as we get everybody in on the uh, in on the stream. We're just waiting on uh, one more person to show up.
So everybody else is talking about television while well, I'm paging Sarah, trying to see if we can get this thing started. Please stand by.
All right, we're not waiting any longer. We'll add her in after the fact. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to Border Kingdoms Adventures, your one-stop shop for uh, D and D actual play on the internet. Because this is the life we lead, and the uh, internet is a zoo, and this is the monkey house. Welcome to our Sunday bi-weekly game of Taldori South, as opposed to the Saturday game, which is Taldori North. This one takes place in the southeastern coast of Teldore. The deep south. Yes. Uh, you are still muted. I no, this this one's got uh, this one's got Lindsay and Ruth. I leave you guys muted until the last possible second. So, tonight's uh, tonight's game is brought to you by uh, brought to you by Liquid Death uh, Lime and uh, Zero Sugar Starry because apparently lime is what I drink now. That is all I drink besides water. It's just lime. Um, it, it, is it brought to you by this because they sponsor us? No, I'm just uh, I'm just uh, I'm just trying to pour myself out so that they will sponsor us. So uh, Liquid Death, if you're listening, you know, hook a brother up. PepsiCo, if you're listening. Hook a brother up. Anyway. All right. So, when last we left off, we've been off for four weeks because our bi-weekly game was canceled uh, two weeks ago due to uh, multiple illnesses and other things causing uh, people not to be around. And since we were uh, since we were short uh, enough people, we just decided to uh, prolong until today. When last we left off, the group had returned from... The first little excursion to a ziggurat in the swamp, where they met up with a newfound uh, person of interest, uh, a, a certain uh, elderly uh, woman that uh, was living in the uh, in kind of the swampy area underneath the ziggurat, um, and she described how her people had been driven out of the lake to the north. Uh, by a hag, or at least somebody she's referring to as a hag. You don't know if that is an actual fey hag, although she that creature has been alive for a very long time, or if it is, uh, or if it is just a uh, another uh, old woman with magical abilities. But uh, that is the last you heard from your uh, from your friend last time. Um, with that, you returned to the city. From whence you came, uh, and uh, you have made your way back to your uh, back to your um, inn in Stilben that you had been recruited out of. You handed off the goods that you found, got a little bit of uh, got a little bit of coin, a little bit of recompense. You found some uh, items that uh, could be of use to you. And uh, you've got uh, you've got the potential to either take a job from uh, David, your uh, your contact in the uh, guild that you are starting to become members of, or uh, you can extend the situation that kind of dropped into your lap with uh, with your new friend and make it a uh, make it an assignment through the guild to go to the lake. And uh, look into this uh, this situation of this hag that uh, kicked out her family and uh, took over the lake and the island in the middle of it. I don't know if we need any new pots and pans, but we promised her we'd bring her stuff back. That reminds me that I will uh, unmute you all now. <laughs> yes, you did promise to bring uh, to bring her cooking supplies and uh, and some other uh, goodies. Uh, back from uh, from the city itself, and um, B needs to buy a jeweler's kit with her with her jingle now. Now so she can afford one. So, well, let's go ahead and uh, move you all to Stilben, or at least move it so that you can see the map of Stilben, because Roll Twenty has added uh, Taldori Reborn into the uh, into the mix. Yay! So we actually have all the maps now. Yay. All right. So. So what do we have for money? Like 600 and some odd. We were we were rewarded 650 for all the. Yep. 
each okay. 650 each for all uh, okay for all the stuff so yeah we, we we have some we are flush right now and uh, okay yep there it is b has been needing a jeweler's kit so she can do her fancy because she's got proficiency it just doesn't have the actual kit so i will have, need to buy one i think they're about 50 gold unless our kind of benevolent dm wants to offer us a guild discount unfortunately the guild doesn't carry those sorts of things um you, rude you do need to go to your standard um the post basically inside of uh, stilben and uh, you can get the you can get those things there Yes, I'd like to get a set of thieves tools. Uh, they Jewelers don't really call them thieves tools, but the but the post does sell them as well. Lock pick set. Baking, Lock repair kit. <laughs> baking things and cooking things for for Auntie. So like I don't know, ten gold worth of flour and sugar and yeah, whatever sure. Auntie would like. That'll, so that'll I'll... that'll buy a metric butt ton of it for. Uh, Okay, so we'll we'll say five gold worth then. That ought to sure. that ought to give her, you know, a sack of flour, a sack of sugar. Oh yeah. And we get her pots and pans Fine. too. Sure. Yeah. So That'll... I'll spend I'll spend fifty gold, I think, on a jeweler's kit and yep. five for, for anti supplies. So. All right. Easily done. Um the post is kind of the the general store in the area. Uh easily uh managed. Uh, to uh, to get all that taken care of, um, and uh, oh, well, looks like it's just the five of us tonight because uh, Sarah is away from home tonight. She just responded back in Discord. So. Okay. All right. Um. Anyways, uh, I think that when we're getting like cooking things for her. For pots and pans, we should probably go towards like, like um, pottery, as opposed to metal, because she kind of lives in a swamp, or she lives in a she lives in the outdoors, and we don't want it to rust. So if we can get like yeah, stuff that's still more gonna need pots too. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I don't think they make stainless steel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. stainless not. right now. Pot, I don't know how well pottery does over the fire pretty good yeah pretty good okay not in my area i think we can get her a couple metal things but with the notion that they aren't going to last as long as like pottery things they make oh. like wooden spoons and things like that so we, we can get her good stuff to yeah to last now i just I mean, find out where my she's, gold she's is not machine. just you know like shoving sticks through things and, and running them running them over a fire she did actually. Uh, she did actually have some stuff. She she was made. She made tea. She has a she has a cauldron for making stews and stuff. She actually had some some stuff. But you're talking about baking supplies and uh, you know, yeah, yeah. You, you get her a couple of the things that you need. You noticed that pottery bread pans. Her her metal stuff was not necessarily rusted. So you're not sure. Well, if she's, she's got a cauldron. Then she knows how to clean cast iron. But like, yeah. and she you know, or she's got some minor magical abilities that takes care of that kind of stuff one or the other but yes yeah but like you're not breaking you're not necessarily baking bread and cast iron no but you can make, <laughs> you can bake cornbread and cast iron in fact i hear that's the only way to bake uh, cornbread is in a cast iron so. yeah only if the cast iron pan is shaped like corn cobs <laughs> okay Northern, no. northerner I'm gonna say that's some Yankee bullshit right there. I'm sorry. You're lucky. Uh, you're lucky. Haley's not on tonight. I'm. I'm born in Tennessee, y'all. So. <laughs> so was Haley, I think. <laughs> uh. Anyways. I have I've been to Tennessee. Cast, I have two cast iron pans and a Dutch oven and a couple of other things, and they are very well taken care of. So. I was in Tennessee once during a choir uh, choir tour, as a uh, as a college student. That was, that I was go fun. there with there. They don't recycle. Oh yeah, that's true. Hmm. All right. Anyways, I don't live there. I go so, down there with friends for writing retreats. Here we are. Hey, did you know that in and in, uh, B and B and D Beyond, you can adjust your coin by like not having to do math? That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I had it's no idea. Neat. I'm sitting here trying to figure it out on my calculator. And it's like, oh no, you can just adjust it. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. 
They even Something use the the lesser known types of coin, like electrum pieces. Otherwise known as the type of coin I will never give out. Because oh. why? It's the it's the D twelve of uh, minted coins. Anyway, I would like I would like at least one paper bird. I uh, feel like if they're not very much, I should get like a number of paper birds. The paper bird is a is a consumable type of a magic item. A, a single paper bird would be fifty gold pieces. <sighs> What Gee, can you afford that of, with your 650 items. reward? I will get three. I think the I question is, do they sell them birds. here? They like, do sell them here as there is a... Um, it had originally started out as a kind of satellite of Gilmore's Glorious Goods, and it is taken over by somebody else. It was basically franchised. And so Gilmore has uh, long since retired. And has been uh, has been uh, selling off his stores to other folks of uh, a, a similar bent and uh, a flair for the dramatic. Uh, so there is a uh, there is a store here that is um, has opened up and uh, is uh, is currently still selling under Gilmore's Glorious Goods uh, with a little asterisk next to the. Uh, <laughs> Next to the name on the sign. As this person that has taken over in this city has yet to establish their own brand. But yes, they, uh, uh, this person uh, is trained in making of uh, useful uh, consumable type items like uh, many of the potions that you would find useful as a, uh, an adventurer and uh, the paper birds. Paper birds, the handwritten sending stones of the magical uh, variety. Any chance of any instruments of the bard? No. In fact, yeah. uh, in fact, also most of the magic items that they have in their shops that would be of use to adventurers are still a little bit out of your price range. Um, Do they have anything like a penny whistle? A penny whistle. Is it a yeah, magical you know. one? No, like oh. the kind of flute that one would give a child to learn how to play an instrument. You can uh, you can find that at the uh, at the general store at the post. Sure. I'm not proficient in it, but I want to learn. Oh, I good lord! Teach. Oh, good lord! How much would that cost me? Um, it's like. Uh, for one of those, it's probably you find like a child's version of it for like a couple copper. Okay, we'll say what three about... copper because it's well made. Sure. What about potions of cure light and antitoxin and alchemical fire? Um. So, uh, antitoxin. Uh, they there's uh, there's a decent amount of that still at the post. Um, because of the fact that uh, the city is so close to a swamp. So uh, general price range is, I think, 25 gold, I believe. Uh, that reminds me, the D&D the &D Beyond says my jeweler's kit's only 25, not 50. So I. That's, yeah, standard price. So whatever the standard price is, is what you would pay. Um, and uh, uh, I believe. Uh, Potion, a standard potion of healing is uh, 50 gold, if I remember correctly. Yes. Yeah. 50 gold. So, what about alchemical fire? Alchemical fire. Um, there's going to be access to at least some of it. I don't know about necessarily a lot, but let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Do, 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 do. Sources, player's handbook, e equipment. How uh, comes fire 50 gold pieces per flask? Um, yeah, you'll probably find at least like uh, two or three in the uh, in the post. The 
if you want more than two or three, then uh, you would have to go about asking around. Hmm. Same thing for, well, potions of healing uh, run about 50 gold. Generally, uh, they don't carry a lot of those at the post. You would get more of those from the satellite of Gilmore's Glorious Goods. Um, he, uh, he gets them, uh, through either, uh, producing his own or by going to, uh, going to one of the temples and having them, uh, produce them for him. So antitoxin is also 50 gold. Yep. So I'm going to acquire one antitoxin, one potion of healing, and two alchemical fires. Okie dokie. I'm going to buy two potions of healing. It's 200 off my gold. Not a problem. All right. And I would like a potion of healing. Are there any left? Yes. Okay. And those are 50 each? Correct. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh my goodness, that snuck up on me. I I will buy two healers potions as well. Okay. I'll take that off my gold. We shall introduce you to your uh, shopkeeper next session when I get a little bit more time to work on him because I just realized I was. 100% just going to base them off of the one that's in Teldori North and that would just that would just be wrong. You should have a you should have your own specific shopkeeper for this city. Yes. So. The shopkeeper is currently on vacation. That's why we don't have yeah. a specific shopkeeper yet. Yeah, we have his cousin in filling in. Indeed. Well, they're somewhat uh at the very least had uh purchased it from the same person the business from the same person. Uh, but, uh, yeah. I keep them uh, close, but not uh, not completely the same. That way, there's a thread, but not 100% the same. Anyways, so the question is, you've got uh, you've got your supplies. What do you want to do? You, uh, you've got some uh, time available to you. If you want, you can... Uh, you can petition to uh, add your potential job into the mix at the guild. You can just go back to go visit Amti. Have we, by completing our mission, have we been rewarded with membership? Uh, you have been given. Uh, you have been given um, tentative membership. So you're on a, a, a trial membership, basically. So yes, you've been given membership. Then we should, we should ask if they would be interested in us pursuing helping Auntie. All right. So, if you talk to David, he will uh, he will tell you. Well, I think it sounds like a uh, sounds like a good plan. If she's uh, willing to uh, start up a uh, contract for you and you're willing to uh, help her uh, for just the recompense that you're getting, um, we can uh, we can definitely uh, put that onto the uh, onto the boards and uh, and just assign it straight away to you. I see no reason why that can't be done. In fact, so what, is, what does that mean that she owes if she hires us? Um, we are, we would uh, do that first one for free simply because of the fact that, uh, um, the cause seems good and you're the ones that brought it to us. So you're the ones fulfilling the contract. We are just establishing it as your personal contract, but we will record think, it on our records. Does that work for everyone? Yeah, we have we have resources and things to bring Auntie, so we should at least stop by if, you know, if we're not going 
there. We just stop by on our way to a next adventure if we don't want to take on other is, things. But I'm cool with going back to Auntie. Is there anything else on the board near where we're going with Auntie and where she was previously living by the lake? Um, there is a, uh, the only thing that uh, David mentions as there's some chatter going about of a uh, group of bandits, uh, specifically a, a, a tribe of goblin bandits that have, uh, have been uh, causing a bit of a ruckus about there. Um, now, that is uh, the only reason I say that that's what we have listening there is because that is what has been given a contract. In other words, um, a uh, particular uh, conglomerate of merchants has hired us to, um, to break up this tribe of bandits uh, to the they want northern them, swamps. Uh, moved or eradicated, or it's up to us? Uh, they don't necess they're not necessarily uh, contracting for eradication. They're, uh, they are contracting for um breaking up their business of raiding caravans going through the edge of the swamp uh so the going uh going the route from stilben up to the up to the uh, delta around that uh, lake that your newest contract is going to be in um has been uh difficult as of late so that's what the reason why they've been looking at you. Um, so, uh, in the case of, well, I suppose I should move you all up there too. The Lucidian Coast. <laughs> all right, so you're at Stillben. Okay. The Catal Swamp, as you get up near the summit peaks here, heading towards. Uh, Drina, which is this is the lake that uh, that the she says the hag took over from her people. Auntie okay. is Auntie's uh, ziggurat is around here. Um, she uh, it's the the goblin uh, raiders have been kind of uh, hitting up around this area in here. Um. Some merchants that are making small trips have taken to going through the edge of the swamp and coming around the mountains to get to Drina here, as opposed to taking whole roads, which are uh, running up from here, across here, you know. You see what I'm saying? It's a, it's a long way, it's a long path around. Uh, they take the smaller one if they're doing small small runs and that's where they've been getting ambushed so if you go into this area here and clear out the the goblin uh the goblin bandits if you just get them to stop raiding the travelers that come through there that's all that they want now if you do that through force or through guile or through uh or through simply uh giving them someplace else to go they don't care okay I have no idea why that posted, but it did. What I get Me? for touching things. Ah, ah you've touched just, things. Just seeing if it works. Congratulations, you guys, it works. Yep. So, uh, that said, that doesn't necessarily mean that's all that there is around there. That's just the only thing that people are contracting for. Um, well, can we sign up for that? Can we absorb that contract in with our other contract we're working on since we're going to be passing through that area we would be happy to see what we could do to end the goblin issues you could do that i'm um, cool with that david uh will look at you and says well so uh here's how that works normally 
if there's going to be multiple uh, contracts that we would uh, bundle together, we tend to do those on our on our own. The reason that you can get away with taking two different contracts in this situation is because of the fact that the first one was your own personal contract. You're the one that brought it to us. Okay. Normal, normally, we'll we will uh, we will try and break things up so that we don't have too many people trying to do too much at once. In this situation, I, uh, I don't see that there would be any problem with that. Um, now, I could be vetoed by the by higher ups in the organization, but. I doubt they would. Uh, they would be that concerned with this. So um, I will take it to them, make sure it's okay, because I have to report in this new contract of yours as well. So I will. Uh, I'll be back here later on tonight. Okay. All right. See you. And he, uh, we will be here. and he heads out after paying you for your uh, for your services on the last one, which we all already took care of. So he uh, goes out and does his thing. Meanwhile, you all are uh, taking your uh, taking your um, thing, uh, dealing with uh, everything, purchasing your stuff, buying Auntie. Uh, Auntie, man, Auntie Myla, I believe was her name, wasn't it? I think it was Auntie Myla. I think you're correct. Hold on. So, I've, I've literally got to create a token for her so that she's on the main page now. All right. So, um, Mela. Mela. Auntie, Auntie, or we can call her mother as well. Mela. Mm -hmm. M A Y L A. I just missed a, uh, a in my pronunciation. Mela. Not Mela. All right. Um, so. You, uh, you take care of all of your shopping that you need to do. Um, you know, get all of your uh, stuff cleaned. Take a meal. Get in a little bit of just an easy day uh, back in town. Um, and uh, David shows up at evening meal and says, I've got good news. I've got good news. The good news is your contract has been posted and uh, it has been assigned to you. And the other good news is they have agreed to uh, allow you to take on the uh, Goblin Bandit uh, contract as well. Um, Excellent. So, uh, the Goblin uh, the Goblin contract uh, you would report back to me uh, once you've uh, once you've completed it. Uh, if you want to. Uh, I want to check back in with your friend after uh, finding out information about this. Uh, this like, if it if it is truly a hag, it could be something that is beyond your means. It could be just a. So the first stage of that contract is uh, gather information, and respond back or return back with it. If it is something that is within your abilities to take care of. Do so if it is something that is going to take a little bit of work. Well, then report back, and they'll extend it to a situation of what to do about it. Okay. Hags are always a, a little bit of a wild card. You know, you know how it is. Anytime you're dealing with something from potentially a different realm, you know, we don't want you to get in um, over your head. Get it? That's a that's a lake joke. I heard that. Uh, God, sometimes I amuse myself. Anyways, so feel free to uh, take uh, on this uh, this task at any point in time. Um, you have uh, you have been given free reign to start as soon as you see uh, fit. Uh, the Goblin Bandit contract does have an expiration of. Um, 
towards the end of this month. And if, uh, well, basically there's a, there's about a week and a half left in this month. You're in, uh, you're currently in uh, Thunshire. Thun so we get about 10 days to do this? You've got about 10 days to deal with this, yes. You're on the 20th of Thunshire, and uh, Thunshire ends on the 31st. Well, we should get to work then. I mean, we're heading that way. You are, in fact, heading that way. All right. So we'll spend the night and leave in the morning. Okay. Sounds good to me. Yay! I get to push the long rest button again, even though I think I already did it last time. All right. Let's go up to here. And, uh... Let's go ahead and edit our quest list here. Oh, there it is. We have a quest list. We do. If you go to the uh, on that page, if you go to the upper right hand corner, that is where wow. It upper right. Upper right. There. Break up tribe of goblin bandits. Twice we get to we have to break them up twice according to our quest list. Yep. Oh. oh. You just caught me in the middle of a copy and paste, that's all. <laughs> all right. Quests are updated. And let's see if we have any enemies on our list right now. Our enemies are empty. Empty will be under the NPCs later yes i'm uh finding an anti uh for us right yeah that one that one will do well enough There we go. On email. He's into the mix. Oh, can I change out my Mavis token from the one you have to the one I made? If it's already on your character, sure. Um, it should be easy enough to do. We just uh, drag and drop it out and replace it. Do I do that or do you do that? I can oh, take you. care of it. Okay. Thank you. We'll deal with the uh, we'll deal with uh, adjusting the hit points and whatnot for the uh, various tokens uh, later. But I can do that. Preferably once we've got everybody here, I'll uh, take care of me checking those to make sure that we're all copacetic. All right. Look. So off you go. After yeah, I got new hit points. After you uh after your your day of uh of rest and uh picking up the next day, which means I suppose technically we are now on today. Oops. And if you look down to the uh lower portion of the uh of the splash screen, uh that is where the calendar is located and there is a token right here that shows what our current date is so if you scroll in far enough i forget exactly what token i used it was something pertinent 
Was it Whitestone? No. Anyway. So. That token is there to represent the uh, current state. Until we find something more appropriate for this group. That said. You uh, begin your, uh, your trek into the swamp. Skirting the edge of the forest. Or the, I'm sorry, the mountain. Heading around. The, um, the tall swamp and the summit peaks, then the, in the kind of halfway point where it's just uh, a little bit, a uh, little bit uh, hilly, leading up into the mountains itself, but uh, not uh, into the murky swamp, not into the tough to uh, tough to hike through hills, um, but uh, close enough to be able to see both. The course of time it's going to take for you, it's going to probably take you several days to get there, depending on how quickly you travel. Uh, so the quick first question is, how fast do you want to travel? Do you want to travel at a brisk pace, average pace, or at a slow pace? I would like the one that lets us stealth. So That would be at a slow pace. So it will take you several uh, days. Uh, maybe not. We only have... 10 days to do this, so maybe... You do. How about the average? What about average. horses? Can't we, like, rent some horses to get that rent? much faster? Well, horses in the swamp wouldn't be really good. Uh, also, I'm, I'm a cat. Not really horse riding. What's a good swamp dwelling creature that can hold, like, 100 pounds? A crocodile. Can we rent? Yeah. I'm so sorry. You want to rent a crocodile? crocodile? Who yeah, doesn't want to do that? I mean, go to Florida. Everybody's like, yes. Crazy Rick's crocodile rentals. I bet in that town where you can get the paper bird, there's like a gator guy. And suddenly, like, yeah, I got Lindsay's a become gator. Florida man. I want to rent a crocodile. <laughs> Excuse Crazy me, where can, I, where can I rent a crocodile and buy some bath salts? <laughs> what the hell? Anyway. I haven't seen Florida Man in the news recently, so. Yeah, you have. His name's Ron sure. DeSantis. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nicely done. Nicely it's an done. insult to Florida Man. <laughs> Poor Florida Man. <laughs> be associated with such a terrible creature. Well, the other Florida Man just got convicted of sex crimes, so. That is true. That is very true. A lot anyway. of stuff coming out of Florida these days. That's true. They, they, they're uh, it's it's an export. It's their it's their biggest export. Oh, okay. Florida man sets record for living underwater. That's what he's up to late, recently. Anyways, all right. So you're going to average speed uh, across the uh, across the uh, foothills of the uh, of the of the summit peaks. So. Uh. Let's start out this fun and merriment with uh, with uh, Lindsay, since you're uh, you're the far left on the uh, on the Twitch channel. We'll go with you first. Go ahead and roll me a d20 if you would. Do first... I just hit this button? Oh, this button. You can do it either through roll twenty or if you can do a push. Did uh... it work? Oh, there you go. Six. Yeah. Well, welcome to your to your first day in the swamp. Dungeons and dad jokes. Dungeons and dad jokes. So is a six good? It is. Or is a six? It is awesome. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is. So you're awesome. gonna run into. Cro we're gonna run into crocodile man. We told you we should have run into, run into crocodiles. Man. Well, yeah. do we run into somebody? <laughs> <laughs> Why do I hear banjos? I hear banjos. <laughs> That's the bard. I'm sorry. <laughs> what did uh, we tell you about the banjo? I pull up my penny whistle and I try to duel the bard. <laughs> Alas, I'm not proficient. As you play your penny whistle, an otter sticks its head out of my pouch. 
<laughs> hey, what about our otter. snake friend? Is our snake friend still with us, or did he decide to go away? Uh, the snake is uh, with the druid. Okay, um, so druid still has a large snake friend with her. Yeah. And I bet large snake friend can take a crocodile. I'm just saying. Uh, he's not that big. <laughs> Actually, I just saw a video where it's like a snake versus a crocodile. So, there was no winner. At about one o'clock in the afternoon, somewhere just after, uh, after a food break, after yes. a new meal, you are given a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a notification that uh, something is up. And uh, what you wind up uh, finding is that, well, there we go. You know what? I have to get it right from the, uh, right from the, you know, well, you know what? I, we, we're going to need a map first. So let's, so uh, let's worry about this first. We need a swamp Everybody map. go ahead and roll me a perception check. Perception, perception. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bees are best. Uh, no. No. Nope. Stacy. Stacy is the, the best. Purple is the best. So Stacy and Arabella will notice this before the rest of you. Um. Ironically enough, you were talking about the snake and how it could take a crocodile, and what winds up happening is that you do find a snake. That can take a crocodile, and unfortunately, uh, without a druid nearby. Uh, Damn it! You know it's a little bit, uh, a little bit trickier. So, uh, you two are not surprised. The uh, the rest of you have the surprise condition for the first round of this combat. Oh boy! Did our druid stay back in the in the inn? Is she with us? Or are we just is she are we yagering her along? Or uh, she's back at the inn for right now. Okay. Still. We're missing the druid and the ranger. Let's see. If we had the ranger, we could travel quickly and not be at disadvantage because I think she's high enough level for that. Looks like oh. this is still got. Uh... We got to make do with what we got. Yep. I hate snakes. I hate water. This is nuts. But apparently, other people are not surprised by a snake. I have. Yeah. A I was expecting screen. it. We're in water. Does anybody have a map yet? There it is. There's a map. I just I had to go like through that. like the three uh, the three part process to uh, take off dynamic lighting. Okay. All right. Yeah. So where? I hate, I hate that they force us to use that. Where are we at? You can go ahead and place yourself anywhere on that road. Okay. How far along, or does it just not matter? It just doesn't matter. Oops. Go, go, Power Rangers. Not in there. There we go. Now I got it. My dragging and dropping is not dragging and dropping. Make sure you're doing it by the name, not the. Uh, yeah, not the grab logo. the name. I I was in the wrong place. There we go. <clears throat> We're missing one. Yeah, it's me. I can't figure out how to. You got to go to the newspaper. And then touch your name, grab your name, and drag it over. It's the third from the left. Oh, thank you. Expand. Okay. Thank you. But now I can't move myself. I'm not inside a bush. No. I think Joe's got to give you control of you. Oh, my hip. Oh. Uh, you, know, you should have control of it already. Yeah, okay, there that, we go. Look, maybe you need to make a pit stop in the bushes. We're not going to judge. Yeah. Um. So am I, are we going like up or down? You're headed north. 
and I just need to know what your uh, what your traveling order is. And uh... I, I guess I'm gonna put myself here, if that's okay with everybody. Okay. Yeah, the kitty's gonna hide behind the the the, the big the, the, the big one. <laughs> the big one. I'm not that big. All right. But... Compared is, to me, you are. Is everybody where they uh, oh, where they want to be now? Yep, I'm fine with that. Cool. I'm on I'm, the board, I'm, so I'm, I'm really happy. It's seven foot four, two hundred and forty pounds. So, so is that all? Girl. Go ahead and highlight your tokens and roll initiative, because a oh, snake God. drops out of the uh, trees. I don't like the after proximity. You. I like my initiative, but I get to take the first round off. I'm coming. I swear the first time I get to take a feed, I'm taking alert. <laughs> I've, I've thought about that. That's a pretty darn good feat. Mavis, B, Stacy. You wanted to send your results to the tracker, but no valid token was selected. You didn't click on your token first. That's okay. I can uh, I can take care of that. All right. Dude, that snake is right where I accidentally put my token. <laughs> so, Mavis, you get your, uh, you get your. Uh, I don't get nothing. Your reaction back. Stacy, you were not surprised by this thing. Kill it, kill it. That's you, Ruth. Hmm? It's your turn. Oh, okay. I thought we were still trying to find things. Nope. Was. I see the dude. I see the big snake. I'm not surprised. I run at it. I would like to rage. Okay. And then I hit it with a maul. Then I miss it with a maul. Going to the mall. Let's mm -hmm. go to the mall. Whoops. All right. B, you were surprised, I believe. Yes, I was. And so my tail just goes poofy and my eyes go really wide and I just kind of stand there and just like, I didn't I just do snakes? I just did snakes. It's somebody else's turn. Adelaide completely surprised. And although Arabella was not surprised, the snake was faster. Oh. Is the snake on the ground or dropping from the tree? It just dropped from the tree, and so it's on okay. the ground. And so it's going to move to here, and it is going to attempt to uh, constrict Stacy. No, Stacy. Ooh, no. that's a crit. Oh, oh dear. Uh, yeah. I get my reaction, though, right? Huh? I get my reaction. You do have a reaction, yes. Uh, I will... Uh, I will do silver, silvery barbs. Okay. Then we roll that critical hit. One second. Let me check that. We get something else. Uh, get uh, what is the name of the spell? Silvery barbs. Thank you. Can you click on the name and post it for yes. Joe? There it is. There you go, Joe. I already uh, found it. Uh, triggering. And use the roll. And I'm giving advantage to Arabella. Against Thank her. you. Uh, All right. Cool. Sure. Cool, cool, cool. Strict again. Still gets a 23. Still hits, but, but not a crit. Ugh. Oh. So. Stupid snake. Ooh. 17 Jesus. points of bludgeoning damage, which is halved to oh. eight. 
Eight points of bludgeoning damage. And you are grappled. And you are restrained. So. Ouch. That took me down to almost my old hit points. Alright. Not a fan. The Constrictor Snake has done its task. The uh, Ruth think if it would have crit. Yeah. Yeah. Bella. So, Alright, I'm gonna move because I want to hit it with the mace and I'm going to try to do I select it? Nope. No, it, you just uh, roll it in your uh, D&D Beyond and it'll port right into roll 20. You, as you do it, hit the shift button on your as you're doing the weapon attack and it'll give you advantage. I thought okay, you gave advantage I thought you gave advantage to B. No. Nope, Arabella. Oh, to Arabella. Arabella. Oh, okay. Um, Ooh. that's, they're not good. Did that hit? <laughs> Your mace to hit is plus one. Are you um, not proficient in it? Or is your strength just that low? My strength is low. It's just something that I can, yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, that's, otherwise I have ranged things. So I thought I would give it a try. <laughs> and I'm guessing I missed. Yep. Yeah, so three or nine is not the, is not the uh, snake's AC. Ooh. It's not a zombie Sorry. snake. Sorry. Hang in there. All right, Mavis. I'll try. Okay, I got to see what I got now. That's not what I wanted to see. Uh... It can make uh, a DC 13 intelligence save. Nope. Okay. Uh, okay, so it takes... If you actually go and cast it, it'll... Yep, there you go. Yep, Four you points. Take And you, uh, minus D4 on the next uh, saving throw. You want me to roll that now? No, we can deal with it when the next uh, when I take make the save. Okay. All right, Stacy, it is your turn. Right. You are I'm... grappled and restrained. Can I still attack? You or... can. You do it. Just attack at disadvantage because of the restrained condition. Hey, Joe. Okay. Yeah. Are we using flanking for advantage or no? No, not currently. Okay. Unless you're a rogue. Well, you just have to have somebody... Well, it doesn't give you advantage. Rogue can do at level 3, you can do the steady aim. That is true. But you can get sneak attack if you've got somebody adjacent. But not necessarily advantage. All I might, right, I might use it. I don't attack. know. This is homebrew. We can, uh, we can talk about that. Let's see here. I roll twice and get the lower one. That doesn't actually do anything, so... Uh, control was the uh, disadvantage, but yeah. Alright, 15! 15. 15 hits. Alright, cool. The 19 also hit. Yeah, but, but I had disadvantage, so I couldn't use the 19. 12! Oh, okay. I forgot. Yes. Nice. Alright, you've dealt some damage to it. A solid blow, as the, as the kids say. Alright, is that it for you? Uh, yes. All right. B, it is your turn. Okay. Um, I don't have advantage, but I do get sneak attack because people are Correct. literally next to it. Um, so I will. Let's see, where's my attacks at? There they are. Um, I will use my shiny new dagger and see if I can smack it. Okay. Well, yep, that sure works. So, uh, eight points? Eight, eight points of piercing damage. Mm -hmm. And that is all I can do, unless I want to do bonus action and disengage, but I don't right now. Let's see here. Doesn't the... Uh... Hmm. 
don't have that information in there. Didn't it? Uh, doesn't it deal more uh, additional damage or something? Only if you crit. Only if you crit. That's right. Thank you. All right. So with that done, uh, Adelaide, your turn. I'll move in, and as I do my bonus action, I'll pull my scimitar across my palm and activate a crimson right and take a lot of Woo! damage. Ow. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's okay. Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? <laughs> but now it's sheathed in flame. So I will take my action to hit the thing. Does that hurt Stacy? No. But a nine misses. A nine does still miss. I'm done. All right. The snake goes. Snake is going to bite at Stacy because I've got advantage against her. Uh, 13? I don't nope. think it hits you. Man, action economy is gonna, gonna really hurt me here. All right. Bella. Hey, I'm gonna stick to spell casting. And I'm gonna cast Guiding Bolt. You will be at disadvantage because you are adjacent to the snake. Oh, okay. Do I, since I've already Never. rolled, do you want me to just roll again sure. and take the lowest one? Okay. Please don't. Oh! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got it. I got it. I got it. You got it. You got it. There we go. All right. So. There it is. <laughs> if I move away from him, I will take possibly some damage or is it so occupied that it won't come and bite at me uh no it's uh it is still a creature it still has attacks of opportunity on the plus uh, side you missed stacy with that uh, with that horribly bad uh, shot are you sure yeah i rolled a percentile okay. just in case <laughs> uh drats so, are you going to move away? No, I don't want to do that. I'm in it. Yep. All We're right. in it to win it. Or something. And <laughs> at the end of uh, the uh, turn, it goes back up to the top of the order and Mavis. I am going to cast Vicious Mockery. I will display that. You don't have to display a vicious mockery. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm doing it because I, I did it before, and you get a D4. I've been I've been playing this. Uh, that's a, so you take a, one from your DC. That, from, that was uh, a mind sliver, from. but I'll uh, I'll go ahead and roll the correct saving. No, the, the mind sliver you take uh, minus one from. Right, I know the the casting you did was mind sliver. It's yep. the damage. All right, so wisdom does it saving work throw, on though. A snake? It does. Okay. It didn't mock him. Oh, hold on. But Let me take a look at it. It's a target. Look like at you with your stupid no though arms and legs. I need not understand you. Yep. So, wisdom save. It's going to fail the wisdom save. It will take the. It fails it even without the one point. And takes. And takes one, one damage. Point of. But he's got disadvantage on his next attack. And I'm giving Bardic Inspiration to Stacy. All right. That's a good plan. I gotta go mark that off. All right, Stacy, it is your turn. You are still restrict, uh, right. restrained and grappled. I'm gonna try and maul him. <laughs> All right, so you're at disadvantage. And 11, you've got a D6 right if you want to if you want to add uh, add your vis or your uh, bardic inspiration. Oh, yes, I would like to add my bardic inspiration. Okay, roll your D6. Thirteen, 13. does make it connect. Cool. There we go. Twelve bludgeoning damage. Twelve points of damage. It is unhappy with that situation. Well, then he shouldn't have tried to eat me. Well, he's still trying to eat you. All right, B, you are up. Okay, since it worked well last time, I'm going to do the same thing. 
Oh, uh, that's a halfling, that one. As well this time. I'm trying to avoid hitting Stacy. All right, Adelaide. Yeah, for my action with my flaming scimitar, I will hopefully hit with a 22. That will, in fact, hit. So eight slashing, one fire. <laughs> Um, and then bonus action, I'll pull out my short sword and hit with that. All right. If a 12 hit. A 12 does not hit. Oh, wait, sorry. You, it does. You successfully cast find AC. Okay. Um, and six more piercing. And you've got the two up in fighting style? Yes. Awesome. Six points. It is bloodied and is <clears throat> looking unhappy. And it is going to attempt to bite Stacy again with this advantage. Gonna attempt. Oh, you do not have advantage anymore. You're disadvantaged for this turn because I mocked you. Yep. So straight roll. Uh, I actually wasn't at yeah, straight up roll, not disadvantage, but not advantage. But still, yep. the ten was the first roll, so misses. Aha! I'm super dodgy, even though I'm being eaten. Yep. Arabella, your turn. Alright, so what is the healing word of this season? We, we have not yet. picked the healing word yet. Oh, did not like the last one we had. Hmm. Um, well, I, I, I think would... uh, I think more that, uh, that Alex probably didn't like the last healing word we had. That too, yeah. The world okay. liked it. Well, I would like to to try to heal Stacy. All right. So, uh, do I have to do anything or just roll it? You uh, go ahead and pick what your uh, what what what. What's your healing word? What inspiring um, words of Ariola. healing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's any better than what it was. Uh, it's it's definitely harder to uh, harder. It's more. Uh, I more think that takes longer syllables. to say. You know, but yeah, it's got more. Alliter alliteration. I just love how the, the last time horrible. you like you like all like chanted it and like screamed it, and this time it's just like it's a question. It's like I'm gonna heal her, Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something with one syllable so that we can something chant. One syllable, okay. But I'm only ten. thinking of dirty things, so Shit. just like are. I'm just gonna go with blank for right now, and I'm going to heal, all right. Hopefully heal. So, Arabella is shooting blanks for seven points of healing. Yes. On me? Yep. Yes. Cool. It is it's it's all just a bunch of filth. You're like one word, one syllable. Almost so many now. things that are one syllable. You yell oh. something and we can't quite understand. This it. is our public school yeah. system at work. She is a public teacher. <laughs> I put a word in our chat on roll twenty. Hmm. I don't even want to know. It's, it's shorter version of that. <laughs> See, I feel like that's too much like the last one. But it goes with the word she chose that was too long. But that's still too much like the last one. Hmm. We'll workshop hmm. it. We'll workshop it. We got, yeah. All if right. anybody watching has great ideas. Seven points of healing. Yes, what should our healing word be? Not tits. <laughs> <laughs> Tits was so last season. Yeah, tits was so last season. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, now see, that's getting way too close to the uh, side effects of one of my medications. I don't know. Which is why it's appropriate. <laughs> Great. I suppose. How is it that the DM has to take one for the team? I don't know about that. <laughs> All right. Mavis, you're up. Uh, we're going to go back to what works best. You all are the worst. <laughs> the <laughs> fucking worst. <laughs> Ooh, how can we, uh, how can we improve on this? Uh, to the Google. <laughs> Wait, we need an old timey word. We need like <laughs> a really filthy word from Shakespearean times that has fallen out of use and needs to come back. You know what? I will I approve will... of that, but I'm not going to help you all one bit. <laughs> this English major is keeping his fucking mouth shut. 
Vicious mockery is just not working, but I'm trying it again. Yep, wisdom saving throw. All right. Yeah, you're right. It isn't working. He is. He's on to your, uh, on your <coughs> wily ways. Takes no damage. Is that it for you? Uh, what do I got? Actions. Bonus. Do I got anything? I will draw a dagger and attack you <laughs> offhandedly and... <laughs> Uh, see what I can do. I can get no strength to it. You only get the secondary uh, offhand uh, bonus uh, <laughs> action uh, attack if you take the attack action, though, right? Oh, it's true. Never mind. I'm done. Yeah. I know it's that way for monks, so yeah, let's say that it's that way for everybody. Uh, all right. Uh, in that case, uh, Stacy, it is your turn. You are still restrained. Yes, I'm reading dirty Shakespeare jokes. Um, <laughs> I am going to to maul. You said that was disadvantages. Disadvantage, yes. Still not working for me. Okay. I just roll a second time. Well, Twelve. Twelve does in fact connect. Cool. Eight. Eight points of damage. Damage. He's looking, uh, he's looking pretty horrible right now, but that's okay. And B, you're up. Oh! Yikes! You were, uh, you're, uh, muted. Which is probably a good thing. <laughs> You're still muted. I'm not hearing you. Nope. No audio coming from you. Did you uh, turn it off on your headset or something? Yes. Yes. Maybe. 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 You can't prove nothing. All I right. I might have sat on the controller. <laughs> Oops. All right, with that. I'm uh, trying not to hit Stacy. It's not working very well. Adelaide. Second burst, same as the first. 13 hits. It does. Six total damage. Um, <laughs> bonus action. I'm just going to swing my short sword. Just tap him. And with that, yay! Hey, great for the mouth, like in yay. Harry Potter. <laughs> you have got a giant constrictor snake. We have now lunch. wrapped around uh, wrapped around Stacy, um, who has been at least partially here. Healed by your uh, by your foul mouth, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So you you, if you want to spend a little bit of time, you can uh, you can butcher yourself up some fresh meat. And, Absolutely. Uh, do that. You know, Snake is good eating. Yeah, it takes you. It does take you a little bit because you know you have to of course dress it and uh, you know skin it and hack off the parts that you want. And, uh, find some way to uh, you know package them and keep them with you. Um, but as long as you keep using it, for... the meat. you can't wet the meat. I can sear the meat so we can like cook it real quick too. <laughs> you can cook. Uh, you can cook a portion now if uh, if you wanted to have some fresh meat. I am uh, proficient with cooking utensils. There you go. I figured I got a flaming sword. You know, just like hold it for a second. And just... It's like weenie roast. Weenie yeah. roasting them. All right, so you uh, you cook up a little bit of fresh meat uh, while uh, while you're packaging it up and um, and putting it into your backpack so that you can take some along and have some uh, meat for the next couple of days before it gets to be uh, too rank to uh, uh, actually.
actually uh, consume. Uh, but you actually have a couple days, and uh, otherwise, scavengers here will be uh, will be very happy with you. And it's I a swamp. I was trying to find so a healing a word, but all I found were dirty Shakespeare jokes. Right. Uh, One of which I screenshotted and put in our chat in case oh. anyone needs vicious mockery. Back in uh, like villain, I have done thy mother. Which chat did you drop it in? Discord, I'm guessing. Discord. Okay. Does anyone have like a great like old Englishy accent that they want to read the joke in? I'm not even gonna try that. Oh, you don't even have to read it in an old. Thou hast undone our mother, villain. <laughs> I have done thy mother. I have done thy mother. Damn. I have done thy mother. <laughs> like it's it's the original your mom joke. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, trust me, I, I I majored in that uh, in that particular uh, in that particular area, and uh, you heard it here. He majored in your mom jokes. I majored in your mom jokes. <laughs> Holy! I did I meet my wife with, in college. Uh, I suppose we can go with the the uh, the name in there. It can we can use Titus. It's like tits. Mm -hmm. It's two syllables. Yeah, but it's got an us in it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I can see that becoming a pronunciation thing, and Titus will eventually wind up getting pronounced to us. Yes. Yes, it will. <laughs> that's the I, southern I, vernacular. I, I, and that's because I know all you, and y'all need Jesus. Is what I, I'm sorry. Y'all need the Dawn Father, is what I'm saying. And you are in the south, so I don't know. It's up to you. But anyways, you've got uh, you've got yourself some snake meat, and uh, and man, it's just like straight out of the bat. You just step foot in the swamp, and then blah. Um, but the rest of the day goes pretty uneventful. Uh, you spend some time butchering, making food, and. Uh, you know, get a few more hours away from the uh, from where you left the rest of the corpse because you just didn't want to have to, you know, be too close to it because scavengers are going to uh, are going to descend on that like like nobody's business because it was a huge sized creature so it was larger a than a horse. Of, a chunk of uh, skin to hopefully make some boots. Sure. Uh, give me a survival check. Okay, hold on. There. Butchering it to just bring meat is one thing, but uh, trying to skin it for the purposes of creating leather, a little bit trickier. Okay, it's survival all the way down there. Oh yeah, you uh, you managed to peel off a, a decent uh, amount of uh, skin to. Uh, dry out for uh, leather to uh, make some sort of boots or something out of. Or at the very least, get somebody else to make them. We're going to get somebody else. You hire the people who know what they're doing. Yep. But yeah, you're, you're able to uh, you're able to skin off uh, a, a little bit uh, pretty, uh, pretty well. Was this a venomous snake? It was not, because Stacy was not making constitution saves every time I... Oh, wait, I never bit her. No, you didn't. Nope, you didn't. So we didn't find out. No, it. But it is not. Hmm. It is a simple, giant, <laughs> simple giant constrictor snake. It's a simple constrictor snake, the uh, larger than any anaconda ice cube ever faced on screen. What about? Could I use my jeweler's tools to pull out the fangs to make jewelry? Sure. Want to check for that? Um, not really, because the jeweler's kit uh, would be if you try to actually create something with it. Prying out the fangs is actually not ter terribly difficult. Okay, so I will take four snake fangs. Yep, easily done. It has got obviously the two larger ones and then two smaller ones on the on the bottom, so you're able to get what you need off of it. I will make a necklace out of you. <laughs> I'm making a pair of boots. I'm making a necklace. I've got a rock. All right. Like a snake I will wear your ass for a hat. 
What was that, Ruth? I want one of its vertebrae. Sure. Yeah, I can make that into a necklace for you or a bracelet. Y'all are need. Y'all sure. are twisted. I'll take so I'll take one of the tiny ones then. Because I imagine they're quite large. Do they, they have are. vertebrae? Yeah. yeah. Snakes. They do. Snakes are yeah. all vertebrae. Right. Yeah. Basically one big spine. Arabella sees all of this stuff and eats some snake and then starts vomiting violently. Oh, I don't know if it's like the snake or if it's like watching you take it apart, but oh. just don't watch us take it apart. Mm. Would you like some jerky? The smell of the swamp. Tastes like chicken. I don't know. I mean, it probably tastes like swamp, actually. The terroir of the snake. <laughs> Arabella is uh, just going to rest over here. Kind of exhausted. That's what press the digitation is for. Or spices. Um, but yeah. Uh, that night, you uh, <coughs> create a camp. I can make our food taste better with that. Uh, I will do that from now on. <laughs> you can. All right. Stacy, why don't you go ahead and uh, roll me a d20 as you attempt to bed down for the night. What am I rolling? A d20. Just just a random d20. Just a random d20. For funsies. Funsies 19. Yeah, quiet night. Quiet night. Um a Heavy breeze blows down, a strong wind basically blows down uh, from the uh, from the peaks above. Uh, remember that is where the uh, that is where the Arashari are, and uh, their uh, their big portal into the uh, plane of air is up there. So obviously the big winds are coming from being about in that area, um, and it seems as if they're blowing your direction. Um, that starts about, uh, about the time dusk, uh, drops and, uh, maintains through most of the night. Um, doesn't really cause too much of a ruckus. There's a little bit of a, a sound of the, uh, of the wind, uh, but it's also being met by the, uh, echoing of waves coming from beyond the swamp. Um, and so, uh, it's a, yeah, for the most part, kind of calming to you. Uh, the next day you wake up. So we get a long rest? You do get a long rest. Yay! B, you wake up, um, and the first thing that you notice when you wake up is the smell of death. Like a, the smell of like a, a corpse that was left in the sun a little bit too long. Just for a, just for a moment, and then it uh, dissipates and goes away. Nobody else notices that sound drop. Ew. So, with that, uh, let's see. Mavis, go ahead and roll me a d20 as you take off in the morning after your uh, your snake boudin. Okay. Well, well, look at that. I want to have some more action. You do want to have some more action. All right. So, in this instance, you are met up by, you know what, we'll go ahead and now uh, use this, uh, use the same one. Now we got a different map in here, don't we? That I don't know. Uh, that was more me speaking uh, hypothetically to myself. Yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and do this one. It's got a uh, it's got a little hut in it, but that's fine. We can use that because it's a ruined hut. All right. So you're in a small valley heading to the north. This is a kind of a trench in between a couple sections of forest. 
And uh, uh, it's ahead. completely black for me. Just oh, oh thank God. Yeah, it's a empty dynamic lighting. I'm guessing dynamic lighting. Yep. Give me one second here. All right, we all have to open our characters' eyes. There you go. Hey, look at that. Go ahead and drop there yourselves in that uh, in that uh, wide ditch. Just paper. dump us in a ditch, Joe. It's fine. And mm -hmm. He does that. It happens. And then go ahead and roll me uh, perceptions. Hey, Marcelo. Welcome back to the 16-month club of, uh, of the panel. Oh, yeah. I perceive the shit out of that. Ah, I accidentally rolled twice. Take the 15. Finally, I can you see wish. something for the change. I am on it today. No snakes are going to get me. Well... The good news is, is they weren't snakes. And you got a 13. It's not bad. It's a rats. I bet it's rats. Uh, 13 is not bad. You do not, uh, you do not get surprised. Yay. They were set up for a little bit of an ambush, but they aren't as sneaky as that snake was. Are we seeing our soon to be new friends? You are seeing a group of orcs that are, uh, they come bursting out uh, because uh, of the uh, of the woods, because they, um, I heard you walking, basically. Hmm. And uh, they look like they're raiders, but they don't look like they are the goblinoid bandits that you've been uh, hearing about, that you've been placed in uh, trying, to, uh, trying to find. So... So are they coming at us, swords drawn and yelling, or are they coming uh, up to They've got axes out, and yes. Okay. Oh, okay. So they've, uh, they see you, and they're like, oh, oh, easy prickings. <laughs> and with that, well. Excuse me, sir, I am not easy. Um, wait a second. There you go. All right. Go ahead and highlight your tokens and roll initiative. Token. Initiative. How do you highlight it? Just click, click on, it. on it. It'll uh, give you the four, five bubbles around your token. Um, Why do I go to the image mm, thing? Okay. Okay, and I'm then I go slow, back in here, easy. and I do initiative. Oh, I'm slow. Good God. Stacy ahead of the orc since. Uh, oh, nice. Stacy, you are the first to go. Oh, okay. I rage. Mm. I would like to rage. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a welcome party. And I run up to this orc and I hit him in the face of the mall. 14. 14 does connect. five damage. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. And Tank would like to give him a menacing face. Rawr! Mean face, Tank. Rawr! Yeah. 
So not only am, did I just run up to him swinging a giant hammer, there was a very angry little dog sticking out of my backpack. <laughs> He's gonna bite this guy's face off. Alright. Blue one goes. Nope. Right. Hey! That wasn't nice. And it takes a swing at you with his great axe. Uh, that is only a 13, which is going to hit. Work, work. Purple one is going to move up to here. And he's going to take a swing at Beat Mavis. See? He comes from the 1920s. 17 to hit. Mavis? Uh... I will uh, make him re-roll that. All right. Silvery bud. Ooh, it was the same roll, but it was almost a crit. And I guess I'm gonna get hit. All right, I'll give you the only four points of damage. Not that. Uh, uh, and the pink one is going to. Uh, is going to return the favor for you, bopping it in the face. There. Stacy. It's a, a 30 20. The dirtiest of 20s. For four points of slashing, otherwise known as two for you. Two. I hear the rolls happening, but I don't see them on the thing. What is going Where is that noise coming from? Yeah, I hear the rolls too, but I don't see them. Last I see is Stacy. Yeah. yeah. I think Joe's got his DMing stuff turned on, so we don't see those rolls. There's oh. some very exciting music happening all over the place. I mean, that too. It got real loud. Oh, that's what happened. The volume got turned all the way up. Ah. Uh. That's why it got real loud all of a sudden. Yeah, but what about your rolls? Are you like rolling behind the screen or something? You can't see them. Oh yeah, it is whispering all the rolls. One sec, I can change that. Never whisper rolls. There we go. All right, turned on or turned off. I should say. So four points of slashing, so two damage to you. And then the last one, is the red one here, which is going to move to here, and it's going to swing at Adelaide or Air. No, Arabella. Who is that person? Yeah, it's a, it is Adelaide. Adelaide. All right, so swings that Adelaide. Yep. Oh, that's a crit, though. Mm -hmm. 16 points of slashing damage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a Tuscan Raider thing with his great axe. All right, and with that, it is Mavis's turn. You know what? I've got this thing so zoomed out. Let's zoom in close up. There we go. If I do a 15 foot cube centered on me, I can't keep Adelaide out of it. What are you trying to do? Thunder wave. It's not actually centered on you, it starts from it you. It comes out of you. Yeah. It comes out of me. Yep. Yeah. So, but the only way that you could do it where you are and not hit a friendly is to go after purple and just purple. If you go, uh, if you go, well, here, there's a uh, spell template for just such an occasion. Spell template for Thunder Wave. I'm trying to figure out if there's some place I could move to get more than one. And I think they're spread out enough. So you, uh, if you go here, you will wind up getting two, but you'll also get Stacy. Um, there's no real place to get two of them and not hit a friendly. Okay. The what else do I got that can? What is the spread of that? Fifteen foot cone. Let's see. Yeah, and they're spread out. They are. It's almost like they they have somewhat of a cunning intelligence. Mm. 
Well, I'm queuing up a devastating insult oh, because, you know, Mavis is so good at it. I should I have saved that too. last swallow. I've got a pill to take at the end of this stream. I am Oops. going to magic missile the one that is on me. All right. So purple. Okay. And that just rolled one, right? So yep. I got to hit it two more times. Uh, no, it's uh, it's all one damage. It's so it's five times three for fifteen. Okay. In that case, it worked out in your favor. Okay, that's true. Did it work out in my favor enough that he's no longer standing? No, it didn't. But he's bloodied. Okay. And angry. I am going to end up over by here. All right. They've got reach, so Red takes an attack. No, they don't. All right. Adelaide, you're up. Mm hmm. I don't think I can take damage, so we're just going to use my regular scimitar <laughs> and miss horribly. Uh, going to try and bonus action. Stab him. All right. You hit with that one, though, for nine points. Yay. Decent hit. All right. I'm done. <laughs> okay. And you're you're hitting the net ones today. B. You're still muted. Okay. There you go. Um, I am going to use uh, feline agility to um double my movement for one round of combat. Uh -huh. Do you need me to post that for you? Nope. Okay, and I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to move, a, you know, out of, stay out of this guy's melee range, but get behind these guys. Okay, yeah, you can do that. So, and then I will try uh, with my dagger to smack pink. All right. Come on, roll 20, or whatever your name is, D&D Beyond. 13. Thirteen hit. You have successfully cast find AC. You hit. Yay! All right. Ten. Uh, Eleven and seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten points of piercing damage. Yep. He's bloody. And I cannot use feline agility again until I don't move on one of my turns. Correct. All right, Arabella, you are up. Um, all right, I have a question about Adelaide. How bad are you? Uh, like, is she... Six, it's a ten. <laughs> You're what? Ten out of twenty-six. Oh, it's already, like, halfway down. Okay. Um, and then, is there a good place for a fairy fire? I, hmm. You could, uh, you could potentially, uh, if you... Could I get those three that are over there? And not without getting at least two of your friends. Oh, see, that's not good. I don't want to get them. Again, we have got the, uh, got the things in here. Fairy fire. Well, what if we place it? We go like it... this. Or you could go here and get yeah. You could what get red and purple one? if you try. I think there. that one's a decent shot for fairy fire. If you wish. Okay, I'm gonna fairy fire them. Okay. Okay. Here right, I go. Next save. So uh, red fails, and uh, purple does not. And you know what? Because they get them too. <laughs> and red is going to be lit up. Okay. And what color is your fairy fire? Um, could it possibly be red? It's it's chartreuse. Uh, sure, it is red. He's enveloped in a, a red glowing uh, natural gas, like looking like fire. Um, with a fairy fire, can I bonus action healing word or because they're no. both spells, not damage? They're both okay. leveled spells, yep. Um, I just yell, hang in there! 
You got this. All right, Stacy, you are up. I'm gonna hit Mr. Pink with my maul. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mr. Pink, I bet you got away. Maybe you got away. The 19. That hits. For 11 damage. And then as I hit him, I'm going to say, you were just so disappointing. If I was your mother, I'd wish I had a girl so that you could hit better. Yeah, it was pretty disappointing because he died. All right. He died? Yep. Well, I say that to his friend then. Like, he was just so disappointing. He died, and I helped. Yep. Uh, blue one. He, he's like, you're right, you did help. And he turns and swings at B. 24 to hit. Or six Me? points of slashing. No, B. What? Okay. B. Mm -hmm. I was so insulting, and I killed his friend that he attacked someone else. Oh, yeah, little loser. She looks a little squishier. Yeah. I do look squishy, and I'm wondering... No, I, I cannot use my bone section to dodge out of the way. Or my, well, nope, as he hits B, I, I turn to Mr. Blue, and I say, Did you not have the balls to try and hit me? You had to go for my friend? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm okay! I'm okay! Not falling for that. Don't worry, B. I'm gonna knock his kneecaps out and feed them to him. <laughs> Purple one. Make jewelry out of his bones! Tank says something at, um, in Chihuahua that is really, really devastatingly cruel. <laughs> totally gets it, too. And so the uh, purple guy is going to swing at uh, Mavis. Okay. 20 to hit. Or 22, sorry. That will hit. That is 8 points of slashing damage. These guys play that... hard. I'll say that Tank is intelligent enough to speak Orcish. It's just that no one else does. <laughs> I can't understand what he's saying. 100%. <laughs> uh, red one is going to swing at Adelaide. 18 to hit. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. Five points of damage. Still up. You got five points left. Yep. <laughs> And if you Mavis. make it to the my oh, round, the I'll try to help front you. Of me is uh, fairy fired or not? Uh, the one in front of you is not. He it's made not. a saving throw. Yep. I turn invisible. Oh, okay. I'm a fur blog. Yep. So that's your bonus action. And I move away. And then I'm moving a little more away. And then I'm casting, uh, I'm healing myself because I have three hit points. Uh huh. There it is. All right. And Adelaide. Uh, yes. Going with my scimitar. 18 hit. Four damage plus. Oh, wait, it's technically advantage, right? Oh, yeah, you do have advantage. Okay. Yeah, so four so... damage. And then no fire because you didn't light up your thing. Correct, because I would probably five die. damage. <laughs> oh, you would. Uh, all right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so four and five. Okay. Guessing he's still up. He is still up. He's looking messed up, but he's still standing. I'm holding my ground. <laughs> All right. B. I am going to retaliate uh, with my shiny, shiny dagger again for be hitting me. Aggressive. Be, be aggressive. Sorry. Is that aggressive enough for you? Uh, it's enough to hit. Nine points. It's my favorite shirt. Well, it already had cat hair all over it, so. <laughs> well, I can't help that. It's your body glitter. <laughs> oh. Terrible. All right. All right. Arabella, you're up. All right. 
Uh, I am in unfamiliar territory, so bear with me. I am choosing to channel divinity, my twilight sanctuary. So as this action, I will present my holy symbol, which looks a little bit like Prince's symbol. And a sphere of twilight emanates from me. The sphere is centered on me and it has a 30 foot radius and it's filled with dim light. The sphere moves with me and it lasts for one minute or until I become incapacitated or die. And any creature, including myself, ends its turn in the sphere, it will get 1d6 plus 2 temporary hit points. Any and, creature of your um, choice. A creature of my choice. And um, if it's charmed or frightened, it will end one of those effects. Nice. I don't know how to mark this off on my sheet. <laughs> Go to your features and traits. Features and okay. traits, channel divinity. You've used one. Okay, features and traits. And right now, the 30-foot oh, aura is uh, lit up around you. Everybody can see it. And currently, you, Mavis, and Adelaide are in that aura. Now, I get to choose. So those two orcs look like they're in it, but I don't want them to get any of the good stuff. Right. So but if I you can... want to, if you want to encompass everybody, you'll need to move your character. What I'm okay. Um... I would like to move so I can encompass everybody. Um, I think right here I get everybody. Yep. So. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. At the end of your turn, you get three temporary hit points. Woo! I missed the name of this. What's what is this aura again? Uh, it's the Twilight Aura. So Channel of Any for a Twilight cleric. So this entire area is uh, it's bathed in the moonlight, although it is the middle of the day, um, and uh, and temporary hit points are granted. So at the end of your turn. So Stacy. It is your turn. All right. Stacy. Looks like Mr. Blue. And hits him in the face of the mall. 14 to hit. 14 hits. 14 to mall. Oh, wow. My joke was so bad, I rolled two ones. Mm-hmm. Wow. Where's the sad trombone? Uh, no, it's, it's not a sad trombone. Oh. And uh, with that, you gain six points of temporary hit points at the end of your turn. Me? Yep. Because you are in the uh, you are in the aura. Cool. The blue one goes. The blue one's going to continue its swing on B, being the most squishy of the two targets. Gets a 23 to hit. That'll well, hit. Five points It'll be of, painful. Uh, five points of slashing damage. Hey, at least it wasn't the crit. That would have been perfect. Yeah, at least it wasn't the crit. I'm okay. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, as long as you're okay. I'm okay. Purple one. Purple one moves to here. And is going to... Hmm. I've got choices. I've got choices. He's going to go ahead and swing at Adelaide, who looks like she is the most wounded. 22 to hit. Yep. Eight points of slashing. I am down. Unconscious. All right. And the one that's lit up is going to, it's going to attempt to be intelligent. It's going to go after B since B looks like she is standing on the last leg. It only gets a 13 to hit though. 13 just hits. Oh, just hit. Seven points of slashing. And now I am down. And I, I do this as I fall. Fair. All right. I've got a great gift for that. <laughs> I have the same one. All right. So that was that. They are done. Mavis, you are up. 
Okay, so who is Adelaide is down and B is down? Correct. Fudge. Is Cure Light Wounds considered an offensive action? Uh, uh no. So. Why would you? Uh, because I'm what are you, what are you getting right now? Uh, you aren't because oh. you cast uh, you cast a spell once you move. I back. cast Cure Light Wounds. No, yeah, you... casting a spell takes away invisibility. Yeah, it does. It's just casting a spell, and I believe yeah, you cast Cure Light Wounds on your you cast Cure Wounds on yourself, which broke your invisibility uh hold on a second the furball one might only last a round two. Oh, if it's for bug specific mm -hmm. yes it is a uh didn't stop uh turn invisible two times per long rest it lasts until the start of your next turn or until you attack or take damage or force someone to make a saving throw so i'm still hidden oh okay all right, yeah, you've got until the end of your next end of this turn. Okay. Uh, I suppose this light can go away because it's, this place is bathed in light now. And you get six points back. And that's on Adelaide? Yes. Okay. And who's going next? Adelaide is going next. And I'll give Bardic Inspiration to Adelaide. Okay. Is it a D6? It is a D6. All right. Okay. Then at the end of your turn, Mavis. I'm, I'm visible. Well, you're visible, and you get uh, five hit points. I have five temp hit points. Okay. I could use those. All right, Adelaide. It is the start of your turn. You are prone on the ground, but you are conscious. I will stand up. And yep. I guess hit purple, then, with my scimitar. 16. Yep. It's for nine points. Is it still up? Nope. Perfect. That worked I, well. Yes. I will then hit the glowing one with my short sword mm -hmm. for my bonus action. Oh, wait. 23 to hit. Yep. That's Seven it. damage. Um. Oh. I'm a super. I'm all done. All right. B, you are unconscious. Give us a death save. Okay, but since I'm in the aura, do I get three temporary hit points at the end of my turn? You do, but it doesn't make you conscious because they are temporary oh, hit points. Fine. Fine. Death save then. Roll a 20. Oh, but <laughs> you know what? Good, good, uh, good point, though. Adelaide, you get five temp hit points. Okay, where are my death saves? Upper right corner of D and D beyond, where your hit points would be. Or you can just roll a D twenty. Gonna say. Well, I'll just roll a D twenty, I guess, because it doesn't. I'm not seeing it here. Have you been subtracting your hit points every time you get hit in D and D beyond? Uh, no, I did. I did it on roll twenty, but I will do it on D and D Beyond. So when you hit zero, the death saves appear. The death saves appear. Okay. <laughs> they replace your hit point uh, box. Okay. There we go. Gotcha. Um. Click. Ooh, one failed death save. Can you watch? Oh no. As B. <laughs> Bleeding out over here. Hacks up a little bit of blood. All right. And then at the end... Of, game from, right? And at the end of your turn, you get four temporary hit points. 
you're still like, you know, in death saves, but you've got four temporary hit points. Okay. And Arabella, it is your turn. Um, okay. It looks like I have a crossbow and he's kind of far away. So you know what? We're going to try to do that because I assume that won't like F up my other stuff. Maybe. Jeez. <laughs> you gotta take the price tag off of them before you fire. <laughs> I'm glad Stick I'm not the healing. only one. Stick to healing. <laughs> yep. Now at the end of your turn, you get five temporary hit points. Now remember, temporary hit points do not stack. So you, you take the higher of the two. So if you've already okay. got temp hit points and they are more than five or more, you, it, you don't change. If they are less than five, you uh, just move them to five. Where do you put your temp hit points? To the right. Oh, there they are. Oh, okay. There we go. All right, Stacy, it is your turn. How dare you hit my friend? I'm very angry. Ooh. Clearly. You going on the cart, buddy? 21 points and you cleave his head. Off of his body. I don't cleave. I have a maul. Yeah, you know what? If you hit hard enough, it'll still take the head off. You perfected the game of golf. Exactly. Yeah. Or T-ball. T-ball. Hold on a second. Yeah. Oh, Here we go. should be our key word. <laughs> there you go. So I play T-ball with this guy. And he's no longer work. hurting my friend. Yay! Yeah. In so, fact, he is the last orc. He was the last orc standing. In fact, yes. So now... Uh, someone please heal B. I don't have any healing. I just have these potions and I just... If, I was gonna say, if somebody wants to take one of my healing potions and force it down my throat, I'll be cool. Um, yeah, I could, I could healing word you. Healing word? Well, if, if you don't want to use a spell slot, I do have healing potions. No, 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 no. I'm sure they come back. Can do this. <laughs> we'll get them back, yeah. Okay, um, we here we go. If we take a rest, I can play a song of rest now. There, we just don't want her dead, because she could stub her toe. Yeah, there we go. And it would be over, so. <laughs> All right, you are conscious again. Um... Everybody, we... go ahead and give me a perception check. <clears throat> so, Arabella is the only one that picks up on this. But you will notice that up at the top of the, uh, coming down the mountain is where the wind is picked up again. You see, in certain parts, looking up, you originally thought it might just be light getting in your eyes, especially since you uh, are a, a little bit sensitive to uh, light. Yeah. But uh, the light, the winds that are coming down, it almost looks as if there's that same effect from your fairy fire it has an effect coming down off the mountainside as well, where there is oh. a there is a spread of a gradient of colors across the rainbow as they come down the mountain. Not Ooh. all winds, but at certain points it looks That's as odd. if there's a rainbow hue coming down the mountainside. Guys, there's a unicorn up there and it's making some magic and it's it's pollinating. I think maybe Maybe like a group of unicorns have gotten together up there. Do you guys see that rainbow? That doesn't make a lot of sense what you're saying. Maybe it's a pot of gold. There's a rainbow mist. Do you see Don't it? see it's rainbow, there. but I see there. a bunch of stars. It's All right. There. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I see it. I think it's um I think it's a gay vampire. <laughs> see a bunch of stars. Yes. Maybe and there's three of you. Gay vampires. A few birds <laughs> flapping around in uh, circles around the top of your head. Are there Mavis. supposed to be three of you? One, two. Maybe okay. start searching the four dead orcs. The Tank. Four dead orcs. Uh, Tank, heal B with your with your healing magic. Don't have Can much in the way of coin, 
I hold tank next to your face, and he just licks your cheek because he's Aww. Okay. He can't do much, but he's, but he's helpful. helpful. And, he's helping. And Chihuahuas are mean, so he just bites your uh, bites your nose. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm also a cat, so it's like, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm really curious about this rainbow, though. I wonder if it's gay vampires. Yeah, yeah rainbow mist, gay vampires. So oh, they um, not that you know of. Is, is there any loot on these nasty? I was getting to that part. Guys. Well, yeah, they yeah. are. They are. Uh, outfitted in uh, furs, hide armor, with big axes that are have got a lot of like notches and nicks in them. They aren't uh, they aren't of the best quality, but they are serviceable, great axes. Are no they, coins. They sell it. Are they sellable? Eh, you might get a little bit of coin for them. Um, Maybe the metal part. And uh, and other than that, <clears throat> it looks like they were. Out scavenging, so they've got, uh, they've got some mushrooms uh, that they've been collecting up, small rodents, things like you know things that they would have picked up in the swamp that they could uh, use for uh, for food. I will take the mushrooms for our our druid friend who is in waiting on us at the inn. Yeah. And we should probably take the metal bits. We could sell them to a blacksmith for like to make into horseshoes or something. Swords to plowshares. That's a, Any that... tribal markings? I understood that reference. <laughs> that's that's some old school magic uh, references for you. Um, no, yes and no. So, okay. um, they don't have any tattoos or anything like that, but they there's they've got a lot of scars, and the longer you look at it, the more almost kind of has a pattern to it. Um. Almost as if they were, you know, scarred in a certain sort of, uh, to form kind of like a, a tribal tattoos or a Celtic knot, but it was in scars. Okay. What is it, it, as we move a little bit away and closer and squint, can we tell a symbol at all? Um, go ahead and give now me a history looking? check. A history check. Can I help to give her advantage? Not really. Wah. You can make your own history check. You can make your own history I'll, check. I'll give that a go, because I'm so helpful. Oh, yeah, this is going to end well. Did better than me. I mean, I might know something about these guys. So, you don't necessarily recognize it, but what you do know is that, um, that in this particular area, there are uh, tribes of orcs that are nomadic and they tend to mark their uh, their clan symbols into them with scars and in particular it always uh, references at least in some part um, whichever uh, deity uh, that they uh, that they follow and in this case um, this does not seem to match up to any particular deity that you can notice. So either A, it is uh, there's no uh, divine element to it, or B, it's one from one of the betrayer gods. Ones that you're less familiar with. I will sketch it to think of, see if we can get any information later. Okay, give me a performance check. You did a pretty, uh, pretty uh, reliable sketch of it, at least of what you think it is. And yeah, you've got a, you've got it now onto a, uh, onto a piece of parchment. Do we think these are the raiders that they've been talking about, or do we just happen across these guys? These uh, look like they are uh, they're swamp scavengers. Um, the raiders that uh, you uh, you were talking, uh, you were assigned to are actually on the far side uh just outside of the swamp and uh and out of the uh out of the things and they were goblinoid so okay. these weren't necessarily the bandits you were looking for these were uh these were swamp scavengers 
Not the droids we're looking for. Got it. Yep. And uh, they seem to be a little bit more bloodthirsty, whereas the bandits are more all about the banditry and taking the money. Um, in fact, there's uh, where guards were attacked and wounded and whatnot. Um, the um, the uh, merchants themselves were left alive. Like as soon as they take all your stuff, they've not been uh, killing anybody. So, all right, and then with that, let's go ahead and move us back to you. Quick question about that rainbow stuff. Does that sound like something that the air shari, like it's from them or? Um, well, if there's winds coming down off there and trailing stuff, it's likely the air shari would be the people to talk to about it, but uh, um, nothing that you are, are aware of. But not like it's caused by them. Like they just don't want to send sparkles it's, every once in a while. Yeah, it's nothing that's like, oh, you know, when those Arashari are, you know, having a party, they like yeah. to uh, they like to glitter bomb us from above. No, nothing like that. So okay. should we go that way and investigate that? That's super weird. So Plus, there might be leprechauns. Well, the other thing we should do also is we need to rest and get back hit points a little bit because mm -hmm. if we go and do something everybody's injured um is it on our way no okay so we'd have to make a detour to and you'd have to climb them out yeah okay hmm. but it's worth uh it's 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 a matter of interest it uh it does spark some interest it would put us at risk of forfeiting our 10-day goblin contract though it would mm, but rainbows well, well, it's on the way back yeah, and where can we on? start climbing the mountain? Because I'm assuming that there's a certain path that goes up. Yeah. There are, um, and uh, the easiest path is uh, towards the uh, towards the northwestern side of the uh, of the mountain. It's just off the mm -hmm. uh, the the road leading north out of Stilben. Well, I'm up for looking at the shiny, shiny things. I like shiny things, so that's shiny, and I want to see it. That's like the opposite direction of where we're going. But it's shiny. You can go on your way but back. But we'll end up losing money if we go that way. Yeah, why don't we go on our yeah, way back? We're too late. So let's catch it on the way back. Okay. But will it still be there on our way back? You never know. I hope so. Can we send a bird that way? I have a paper <laughs> bird. I could be like, I like your rainbow. Who do you know uh, <laughs> Who do you know in the, uh, in the Arashari that you would send it to? Shoot, I can't just yeah. put rainbow to whom it rainbow concern. person in Arashari. <laughs> it just like flat, it, flat. it just flies circles around you. Mm -hmm. make it You're very pretty. Yeah. Dear gay vampires. <laughs> yes. We like your sparkles. <laughs> want it's only in the us. sunlight. Stop it. We want to come to the rave. <laughs> Yes. I have glow sticks. <laughs> the gay vampire rave. Yeah, you just hear the heavy beat music coming from up there and there's glow sticks going. Yeah. I'm... And half the guys are naked. I mean, I'm there. Right. You know, it's like Burning Man, except, you know, without the desert. Um, so. Perfect. With that, uh, we are at uh, 930, so we will call it, uh, call it a night for tonight. And I have moved aside, uh, moved up our date. We are on the 23rd of uh, Funchir. So you are, uh, you've uh, got until, uh, got until the 31st to complete your, uh, complete your contract for the. Uh... Are we getting, are we taking a short rest right now? Are we taking a long rest? It is up to you. Uh, you're taking it. Well, you know what? Let's just do a long rest because you're going to, uh, you're gonna have a pretty, uh, pretty open uh, day for the rest of the day. Okay, so make make camp in that abandoned cabin that we just saw right there. Yeah, sure. That'll okay. work. Okay, long rest. Long rest. Thank you. I'll feel I'll feel better in the morning. Okay. Yeah. So for those of you that stuck around for the fun of me critting them and them critically missing me, 
Uh, we, we appreciate go. you hanging out with us on a Sunday night for a little bit of Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, from all of us here at uh, Border Kingdoms Adventures and the TTRPG Geezer, uh, stay healthy, stay safe, roll some dice. Just don't do it on my lawn, you damn kids. <laughs> Catch <laughs> you next you. time. Thank you. Good night. Bye.